Right, so I've positioned my truck from the lumber mill and taken it down to the fuel station and refueled. How's the uh, recovery getting on down there? Well, the K700 finally made it to that to that C, so I'm just gonna pull him out now, or try to pull him over, and then fuel him up and make my way to the lumber mill. That's the plan, anyway. Okay. Hopefully that'll work out. I'm going to head down towards the log kiosk that you used. I want to try that route compared to the other route. And also, if I'm heading down there, if things happen, then I'm not too far away <laughs> <Yeah>. from you. <laughs> yeah. Well, the good news is the K700 just made it through the river no problem, where the sea just got stuck. So I'm probably going to try to turn the whole machine around here, which... <laughs> hmm. We'll see. The K700 is like, I don't know, it's just a very, very useful vehicle. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, most definitely. Like, some of the trucks in this um, are really, like, once you load them up, they're just more or less useless. Like, the ones that you can't, they don't have an all-wheel drive, or even the ones that don't have a diff lock, which is just insane on a map like this. Yes. It's super challenging. Well, and some of them are really... You could just question their There, everything is fully fueled. Now my utility trailer is empty. Those pesky logs in the mud. <laughs> uh, when you came down towards the log kiosk, did you have any mm -hmm. major problems that I should be aware of? No. No, it's actually pretty smooth going, getting down there. Okay. Well, I don't think I need that trailer anymore because it's empty anyway. So I'm just going to abandon it. It must be interesting designing maps for this thing. Trying to balance it correctly because you know one one log placement, one stone placement, one bit of ground that's slightly too deep and you can make it from easy to challenging to impossible <laughs> very easily. <laughs> uh, and then when you take all the factors of the different vehicles you can do it in. There's a lot of variables there. Yeah. You know, but I find that, oh, I, I ask myself that for a lot of games, though, because map making, that can't be easy. You have to think of so many different things. There we go. I actually don't know. Like, I know with Farm Sim, the giant ship and editor, don't they, what you can use to create the maps. But with this, yep. I don't know. I don't know yeah, what you use. Know. Do it with this one, to be honest. Does it come with its own editor or what? Oh boy. I'm so trying not to use all wheel drive when I can, but the fuel burn is insane. You're getting stuck again down there. Oh, I'm trying to get the uh, the log truck unstuck right now. I'm working on it. Oh boy, some nasty rocks here. It used to be that I, I feared the rocks more than anything else, but now I think I fear the fallen trees more than anything else. Mm -hmm. Too many of them, and they can really um, stump you. Excuse the pun. <laughs> nice. 
Oh, nothing but a good pun. Hmm. Can't beat a good pun. Looks like I need to stay right on this side, getting across here. Well, you would you could say we are logging quite a bit of time in this. Oh, okay. it's the <laughs> enough. <laughs> that was terrible. I see myself out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll shut the door. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. Uh oh. I'm spinning. No, it's called spin tires. Wow, I just winched onto a tree and as I hauled in, it snapped the tree. Yep. Welcome to my world. I did exactly the same thing earlier. And that was the only tree that was anywhere close to the <laughs> within reach. So. And it gave up on you. <laughs> you can imagine how happy I Oh yeah, of course. Now I'm winching to the trailer and I just pulled the trailer over. Good. That's I'm aware good. that I've used almost, uh, I don't know, a quarter, maybe a third of my fuel just getting down here. <laughs> just slightly worrying me. Wow, I've managed to miss the road. Oh dear. Uh, this could be a problem. You know, I'm so happy that I'm having to back up all the way with a Pintle Hitch trailer. It's, it's like the bestest. Come on. There goes another tree. Trees around here are not very strong. No. Maybe it's time to back out of here. I have no <laughs> I have no idea what I'm gonna do now. I got the truck halfway out and halfway in and I'm gonna be really, really brave now and I'm gonna try to turn it around in the river. Brave or stupid? That's the question. Yeah, I'm a bit stuck myself, and it really doesn't help the fact that it's night time. <laughs> no. <laughs> Even a little bit. Oh, oh, oh. Well, what do you know? I got myself out of this mess. I'm still working on it. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use the uh, I'm gonna use the K700 as long as it has fuel to uh, move myself along. Boy, this is tricky terrain. Mm -hmm. All the time, I'm just burning more fuel. Okay, back on the dirt track. I went slightly off the track though, and it was oh my god, it was so difficult. The terrain was horrible. There was only two trees in sight, and they snapped on me. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I know, you, you hook up to them and you're like, oh, okay, the rescue is here. It's it's all good now. Snap. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's great. You play a lot of those um, rescue games, don't you? Mm -hmm. Which is the, the best one, do you think? Right now? Hmm... Oh boy. Which one do you enjoy the most then? Well, the emergency franchise is something that I really enjoy. Always enjoyed. They are. Uh, um, they, they started 20 years ago, actually. 20? Blimey. 20, yes. 
That was the emergency one, was 20 years ago. And, uh... It really... Now with emergency, well... They call... They, they released it initially as emergency 5, which was the latest. And then, within a year... It became emergency 2016, then it became emergency 2017. With virtually no changes to the game itself. Really? Um, what, so they just kept pushing the same thing out slightly differently with a new name? Well, they they had to... I mean, you you got to be... Give credit where credit is due and so far that they put a couple more campaign missions for every iteration that they released. But there were a lot of problems initially because... The emergency franchise lives off mods, not of the the base game is really just for the modders to to do something with it. And, right. and on that one, they almost dropped the ball. However, they recovered, and now uh, the latest like there is a mod called the Wuppertal mod, and that is the first quote unquote real mod that you can use, and it shows what is capable, what the game is going to be capable of because the graphics are beautiful. And with the right mods, it's going to be a big contender. So, what, I mean, what do the mods generally do? They add more vehicles or add more scenarios or add more maps? They, yeah, they add more vehicles. They, uh, they make the, like, for example, the, the, the base game doesn't have really a water system in terms of you just you put your truck there and use all your engine and you start extinguishing the fire but you don't have a tank so you can do that forever and ever now with mods you all of a sudden have to think of supply and demand hmm. if you hook up enough lines then you can easily drain a hydrant like to the point where the hydrant can't keep up anymore with the pumps and it just adds more realism yeah I mean for for the Hmm. Layman, it can be a little bit overwhelming. Yeah, absolutely. But if but if you're like a seasoned player and you're looking for a more, you know, more realistic challenge, that's what you'd want. Well, there is a lot of people that I know that play it are either full-time firefighters, volunteer firefighters, you name it, right? So, for for that kind of clientele, you want it as realistic as possible. What? Well, so they. That, like that's their job and, and they play it in a sim as well mm -hmm. interesting because like I've talked you know I've talked to real truckers and stuff and like some of them are real truckers and they'll play Euro truck and others have the view of that's my job I don't want to go home and do that as well <laughs> yeah yeah and I can I can see that point definitely but with emerge I guess yeah, em emergency personnel is a special breed of people. Being that I am a former EMT and also volunteer firefighter here in Canada, uh, yeah, it's really it's a special breed. How often do you have to attend like fires and stuff as a, as a volunteer? Well, I, I I don't anymore because with my job at the moment I just can't. Yeah, I, unfortunately. I would love to, but uh, did you enjoy I, it when you? I, I love it. Yes. I mean, it's it's interesting because after, like, if, if we go back to the very beginning, um, my first contact with any kind of emergency services was uh, when we had mandatory first aid courses in uh, junior high and uh, the red cross the german red cross had this thing going uh, was called youth red cross which uh, was an alternative to the to the fire explorers which they get most of their recruits really from from you become a fire explorer at i think it's as young as nine where obviously you don't go to real fires, but you you learn all the all the tools and all the all the tricks and of the trade pretty much uh, in a very controlled environment, of course. And it's 
great for the kids because they get to wear firefighter uniforms. And <laughs> yeah. Oh, they love that kind of thing. Red truck. But for me, um, all my friends started going fire explorers, and then I had uh, somebody from the youth Red Cross approach me because they thought that during the first aid uh, thing I showed a lot of interest in it. Hmm. And so. I was in the Youth Red Cross from, I think, 10 until I turned 17. Uh, so all the way through my apprenticeship too. Oh, halfway through my apprenticeship because, well, I don't know how it is in the UK, but compared to the US, the school system works a little bit different. A lot different, actually. Or even compared to Canada. Um, and then I went, well, you know, I was a mechanic. That was my trade. With MAN, in fact. MAN mechanic. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, well, from there I got into the army from, from being a mechanic. I volunteered as uh, for the German army, got into army aviation, became a sergeant fairly soon. Had no interest at that point, obviously, to do anything else but my stuff with the army. So, but after the army, there is this thing, pretty much it's reintegration into the civilian life. And as part of that program, they put me through EMT school. And that's how I got back into emergency services. As the EMTA in Germany. You've done a few different things, really, haven't you? Yeah. It's funny when, when, when people ask me, oh, what, what did you do? And I'm like, ah, oh, what didn't I do? <laughs> yeah, I did this and this and this. It's funny because in, in the end, it all it plays in. That's, I guess that's one of the reasons that I play so many simulators, because I miss a lot of that stuff that I used to do. Yeah, true. And it's... Uh, it allows me to go kind of back and relive memories. You must wish it was all more realistic, though. That's my biggest problem. That's why I play all the simulators as realistic as I can. That's why I have all those different controls. Some partially built myself controls for, for like cranes and stuff like that. Just to have it as realistic as possible. But yes, I do wish a lot of the stuff would be more realistic I mean and then the funny thing is I came to Canada and I was in the beginning a mechanic again because that's how I came over here a skilled worker they were looking for heavy duty mechanics and I fit the bill so was away from the emergency services again until the company that hired us lost a big government contract and so they let us all go then I ended up on a farm, which, go figure, <laughs> and worked there as first as an agricultural mechanic, and then uh, I ended up working more as a farmhand, as, uh, more than anything else. Like got all involved in in harvest and learned a lot about taking care of cattle, which. I don't, I mean, farming sim on, in terms of cattle management is just a case of throwing the right yeah. proportion of things in there, isn't it? Is there a game out there yet that does it properly? No. Well, I don't think you can really. I, I think this is one of those things that you will not be able to simulate with everything that's involved. Yeah. That there would be a game in itself. I have to admit, though, the way that farming sim depicts making the TMR, the total expression, it's not that unrealistic because I, in the winter, I was hauling, I was driving for that farm. I was driving the feed truck because in the winter you have a feedlot where you have all your cattle. Well, a bigger farm has a feedlot anyway, and we had uh, 400 head. So I really, you go out in the morning at six, you start your truck up, you start your loader up, and you just get everything going. 
Well, I mean, in, in Canada, like where you live now, it's in winter, mm. it's just, what are, the, what are the farmers doing in winter, um, which lasts for many months? Well, that's the thing. You you pretty much, you, you spend all year getting enough forage together to survive winter. Yeah. And then you have those feedlots where the cows are in pens and... And uh, yeah, th that's what I did. I I drove a food uh, now a feed truck then in the winter. It's you, at six in the morning when it's dark. You go out, you load your truck for the first time, and then you do nothing else but you mix your TMR up. Which the only thing that bugs me a little bit about uh, farming simulator on that regard is uh, that they don't add grain or any kind of, yeah. of special nutrients. To, it's it's just hay silage and straw and yes the roughage is important but especially nowadays uh, where you want the cattle to be as healthy as possible and it's all high power high power high power you add a lot of grains and and uh, well special stuff there too uh, like nutrients that you add i kind of thought and, it'd be fun if they if they took a step back from all of the modern machinery and just went a little bit old school on it um like some of the really older trucks and like the older techniques mm -hmm. um, have you ever tried the historical machine uh mud pack i have yeah but i was thinking more along the lines of i don't know you could go all the way back to using oxen and stuff if you wanted to you could you could really go retro oh yeah that would be amazing because I think is my modern machinery is great, but it does just make it, in some respects, a little bit like there's a lot of automation, you know, mm -hmm. with these harvesters with GPS technology. You know, it's just click, drive, 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 and you think, well, the machine could do this. It's like, <laughs> oh no, I think I might be stuck. Oh, you too. I was about to say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not only am I stuck, I've got nothing around me to grab onto. Which is not good. But yes, I agree, that would be that would be nice. Oh yeah, I'm stuck alright. I'm not even moving. Yeah, to re reverse and go in back at a different angle that I managed to get across. Oh, oh, wait a second. Something's moving. In real life, I would have just ripped the bumper off probably, but hey. Oh, I see your K700 over there. Oh, trouble is, I'm about to run out of fuel, so I'm going to have to bring the fuel truck down here now. You didn't bring a refueler trailer, did you? No, I had to drop the... Well, the trailer was empty anyway. I'm almost thinking with machines that burn that much fuel, it's almost to the point where you have to have one person dedicated on a fuel truck, always traveling with the others. Like, if you have more than two people. Well, it's certainly the case that fuel is a massive consideration. Mm-hmm. Um. Well, the good news is I can see my headlights again, so we're making progress. It's They're not buried points. anymore. So these these caravan trailers have only got two garage points on the back. Crikey. Come on, can do it. Eighteen liters per minute, my goodness grief. <laughs> Gonna start maneuvering this uh fuel truck.
because I've only got about 10 liters left down there, so I'm going to have to bring it down anyway. Yeah, I have 82 liters, but I'm also burning 24 <laughs> per minute. <laughs> so you've basically got about four minutes to, to get through. Yep. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Why though? I think I'm gonna... Fuel station is here. Yeah, I'm gonna hightail to the fuel station because otherwise I won't make her. And then I come back and continue dragging my truck out. Wow, this is a job and a half. Yep. I think he's unlocking that garage top right to the map. That's like eight eight points to get up there and get that unlocked and I think we yeah. can only bring is it two at a time uh with those with those insane trailers yeah it's four and I have one halfway there but I ran out of fuel <laughs> oh really <laughs> <laughs> yeah something new hmm. something totally unheard of I don't know if it's if it's a benefit to unlock in that garage or not Like, if it would be useful. Right now, my, my current instinct is, is, is saying that we need to have two refueling trucks um, en route because you can't go down to that log kiosk at the bottom and get back. That You, you need to tank. refuel. No. Yeah, you just can't. So you need a refueling truck on that section and then, likewise, get in all the way up to the top and back it's probably not doable either. So you need another one up there. Oh, I have a sinking feeling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have to stop with those terrible puns, I swear. It's definitely a challenge, this map. Yeah. It's nicely done, though. I like it. It's it's not. It's deceiving. Uh, it kind of lures you into thinking, "Oh, that's not so bad." And then when you yeah. get into it, it's like, mm, "Yeah." <laughs> Rethink that statement quickly. I mean, if you had like three people in here, it would get easier because you could have one person running fuel and stuff. Yeah, it wouldn't take that long. It would still be challenging, though. It's not like this map would all of a sudden be just a breeze. I, I, oh my goodness. I have, like, two trees stuck between my drives. <laughs> yeah, that would make for a rather challenging day. Oh yeah, and I have about a minute's worth of fuel left. Well, luckily for you, I'm on the way down with a fuel truck. How much fuel do you have in said fuel truck? I just refill refilled it. Oh, good. So I think probably, I can't remember, 900 litres, I guess. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. we get us somewhere. Plot a route. Crikey, it's not a long way down there. <laughs> you know, it's so deceiving because it's like, oh, well, that terrain is really not bad. And then up until the moment the first wheel hits, that soft spot and you just you're gone done over well like 500 meters is not that far but when you're only going a few meters a second <laughs> or even a minute sometimes it really is yeah if 
I can only make it through this little space here because I can see the fuel station. I just won't be able to reach it. Oh, look at you. There you are. I was going to say, it's not a fuel station you want. Do you like some fuel? <laughs> well, even if you just give me enough to get me to the fuel station so I don't drain you because I have a 340 tank. But Oh, thank you. I'm going back then and rescue the log truck. Much obliged. Do you know what? The only annoying thing about that is like when you've... You know, you drive forward one way and then when you want to use the claw on the back, you've got to reverse your controls in your head. Because you're now mm -hmm. going backwards. Okay, let's see. Uh, I can see the grooves in this mud. I'm going to try something here. I just plotted a new way out that I think could be a little bit better because it's painful getting through that. Yeah. I'm just going to try to make a way through those trees here. Which... Have you seen the latest update for Bus Sim 18? I have not played Bus Sim or Fern Bus for quite a while. Fern Bus is going to be interesting because they are close to releasing their next uh, DLC. Austria and Switzerland, I do believe. Have they, have they changed the gameplay in any way? Well... People are still teleporting in. <laughs> that's, right. That's that's one of my biggest. Well, I don't want to say beef, but you know, for a bus simulator to be, it's kind of essential that people don't just walk in. But yeah. Maybe I see it. Maybe I'm too. I don't know what. Well, now I was playing that, um... What was that bus simulator? I was playing that and, um... The one that's set in, like, a Russian map. Yeah, that's the 18. Yeah, I was playing that and, um... Ooh, refuel. Like, people actually get on the bus, which was, like, a nice thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they actually walk into the bus, but then they like sit in really strange ways. <laughs> Yeah, some of them. Well, <laughs> I I was making the observation that I started to think that they spend a lot more time developing certain uh, parts of certain people than the actual game. Because if you look at the females there. Well, the bus on the bus themselves just look really kind of. <clears throat> they're not that well rendered from the outside. They don't look that realistic. No. And the audio is pretty bad. Like the the engine audio was not good at all. Inevitably, any bus game that comes out is instantly measured and compared with OMSI. And OMSI set the standard. I mean, in terms of maybe not in terms of of, of uh, graphics for sure, but. It, from a simulation mm. perspective, you know, it was it was pretty good. The audio was always mm. good on the buses. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Let me have a look at the water. However, seeing that latest, like, if, if this is anywhere close to truth, you have to look on 18 what they are saying for one thing they are working on another map cologne in real scale which 
I have no idea how this is going to be performance-wise. Cologne in real scale. Uh huh. Interesting. Well, he says he says that the map that they they have right now is real scale as well. It would be a one-to-one -one scale, which I don't know. I don't know that city, but um, the graphics that they showed on the screenshots, I was shocked because it looks almost photoreal. Which game is this? The, the Bus Sim 18. We are still talking about the same game. Right. I have okay. no idea how in the world they're going to do that, but if it's true, then... Well, maybe they did what Farming Sim does and just showed you a CGI version. Well, that's what I thought initially, too. Here's what we but, could have, but you're not going to get. <laughs> yeah. Well, just <laughs> just like that, <laughs> that thing where they show the real-life dinosaur and then... You have two pixels jumping over the screen. It's really it's amazing. <laughs> Come on, you can do it, buddy. Have you heard of any news on, on Lotus, Sim? No, honestly, I have not heard anything. Because, I, I mean, it's just gone very quiet, hasn't it? Mm-hmm. Just wonder if they've, they've got any kind of target release date for anything yeah the last I heard was when it's done <laughs> which yeah hmm. you seem to hear that a lot these days <laughs> yeah stop asking it's done when it's done right can I make it through this bit I wonder um, I wonder how the bus is going to change the game. That's the that's the uh, long haul version, pretty much of uh, Fernbus. No, sorry, the 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 city version of Fernbus. Mm. However, the whole game is based from the beginning um, on multiplayer, and on not on pseudo multiplayer like like bus company simulator, but on a real multiplayer. Like, you actually see people driving, and uh, the whole economy is, is, is built around you making decisions. Like, you, uh, there's some kind of a bidding system, from what I understand, um, and you bid on different lines within Berlin, which is the first map, and uh, you are deciding how much you pay your drivers which gonna be real people you decide how much the tickets will be and that will Blimey. decide pretty much how well your company is doing so it's a tall yeah. ask isn't it eh? mm -hmm. so that pretty that, excited to see that, that can work real. in a um, in a community environment but in terms of just randomly on the internet i'm not sure that's going to work like if you you know if you with your community set up a server mm -hmm. and all go in there like that could work reasonably well um, but if you just start playing with random people off the internet I just don't know if that's going to work yeah that's a good point it's the internet after all yeah you know, it's the same as you know the, the, the Eurotrip multiplayer like in principle <laughs> Oh it should goodness. work really well and you should be able to drive around and see loads of truckers in practice you see a lot of people just like what well, kids basically playing treating it as gta and so the people who want to yes. drive in a realistic fashion can't because there are many others who are not doing it properly isn't that the truth Yeah, Euro Truck multiplayer or, or American Truck Sim multiplayer. Well, it doesn't really matter which one is. Challenging sometimes. If I. If my trailer's got seven points on it and I take it to a, a lumber mill that only needs one point, will it only I take one really point away? I'm not sure. Because I don't want to lose, like, a load of stuff <laughs> finding out. <laughs> yeah. I 
That is a very interesting question. It's one of our lumber mills only needs one more point to finish it, and I, I, I want to drop one point's worth off, but I figure my way up there now. And it's going dark again. I know, and I'm still trying to get this darn truck to where it needs to go. It's a, it's a project, all right. I think this is a, if I remember from last time I came down here, it's quite a tricky section. Oh, I know, once I got him unstuck from this, then it's smooth going all the way. But looking at the time, we should maybe take a break here. Yep. Let me uh, get the truck around the corner. And we shall continue. Uh, have you got points on the back of your trailer, though? How many have you got? Seven? Uh, yes, sir. All right. So between that and this, we can finish the lumber mills. Mm -hmm. If we can get it delivered. If I can ever get this thing to unstuck, yes. <laughs> Alright, do you want to stop there then? Yeah. Okay, we shall continue that in the next video. Absolutely.